So I don't know if you know this, that um, whenever I used to be an actor mm-hmm. and uh, I was doing a movie with Noah Wiley. And whenever he, before a scene, he'd go like this, he'd jump up and down, up and down just to get the blood going. And people thought it was just so weird. And of course, he's probably the only one on the set that actually went on to do a bunch of work. And so I'm taking that on. So here we go. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, go, go. All right. <laughs> That's like the Tony Robbins old, like motivational. Uh... Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you need to get the blood flowing to get the mind working. Totally Absolutely. believe it. Well, Nick, Nick Blayton, B-L-A-T-I-N, because otherwise people, who, who knows how to spell it. You have made such, you and I networked together, you made such a splash in the groups, in that world. It's really pretty amazing. Most of the time it takes people a lot longer, whereas you just got in there and you delivered great product. You have that huge smile. You know, you're easy on the eyes, too. You know, I mean, not that I'm not looking because, you know, that's not my thing. But you really have. And your reputation has been been fantastic within the group, too, as someone who really, when it comes to hard money, which we'll have you explain what that is, um, you know, you're highly respected in the industry. And for, for the right person, I mean, you can be a lifesaver and a game changer in the real estate. So before we go into any real estate health stories, if you wouldn't mind, just, you know, Tell me a little bit uh, about about you and, and what you do. We don't want to bore people with going on too long, like some sort of commercial or something, but let's hear what you have to say. Sure. Well, before I get into that, uh, just first of all, thanks so much for having me. And interestingly enough, your reputation precedes you. And before we met at some of these networking groups, I had, of course, seen your open house signs all over Los Angeles. <laughs> and it's a little daunting when you meet someone that you've heard about before, um, but you ended up being such an amazing, nice and generous person and one of the biggest connectors. And, and I'm so glad uh, to be a part of your show. So thanks for having me. Oh, it's, um, a, it's a pleasure. And I, I'm glad to be daunting to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Regarding what is hard money, mm-hmm. the simplest way to put it is I like to ask people, do you own a home? And they say, yes. And then I go, or I can ask you, Scott, do you own a home? Yes. Awesome. And do you have a mortgage on your home? Yes. And do you have to make a monthly payment? I do. And what happens when you stop making that payment? I get in trouble. <laughs> bad things happen. That's right. Yes. There's bad things. There's late fees and default fees and all sorts yes. of problems. And eventually the bank can take your property. And so if you understand that, then you're an expert in what I do. The only difference is I am not a bank. I am an individual private person. And mm-hmm. I lend people private money instead of banks, which are lending institutional money. So that is, in its simplest form, what I'm doing. It's just real estate mortgages from private individuals. Awesome. Awesome. And give me a snapshot, because yesterday I called you about a deal, because there's a family that I'm working with coming up, and they want some money. They they need some money to do a renovation, which I'm advising them to do, so we can make them more money. And I was thinking, what's the best way to do that? Because they can't do the HELOC for reasons I won't go into, a home equity line of credit. So I started thinking, gosh, I wonder if if Nick could do it. And it was cost prohibitive in this particular scenario. But give us an idea of what the numbers look like, if you don't mind. Yeah, and that's an exact scenario uh, for remodeling is something that I'm commonly called for. But typically, our interest rates uh, at this time, they're always higher than whatever bank rates are. So right now, <laughs> bank mortgages are expensive, around you know 6 7 8%. So we're kind of right. between... 10 to 15 Mm percent and that's dependent upon a lot of factors but without getting boring it's basically is it a first or second mortgage is it high leverage low leverage it's risk yeah and so we Mm -hmm. kind of determine based on what we think the market rate would be for that particular hard money loan and uh try to try to make it quick and easy for the client so you kind of get what you pay for awesome and you also have an offer to people who are wanting to invest to invest in in these leads. So can you tell us how that works? Yeah, that's exactly right. So essentially, we're lending people money and we have their property as collateral. And so everyone is very incentivized to pay us back. Nobody wants to get foreclosed on, no one wants to mm-hmm. lose their property. And so it makes it a very secured and safe loan. Uh, this is actually the highest rate of return that you can make on a collateralized investment. Mm-hmm. So essentially, my team does all the work of underwriting the deal, meaning we're checking the borrower's credit and income and the property value and all these things that are important to ensure our safety. And once we finalize and determine a deal is safe, 
we call our investors, people like yourself with money, mm -hmm. and uh, okay. then they get the opportunity to determine if they would like to fund that loan and make a nice high rate of return, or if they'd like to pass and wait for the next one. Great. And what are your, um, and if you want to tell me just to stop, you can tell me, but how often do you, does it turn out you have to foreclose on a property? Yeah, no, I'm an open book, so you can ask me right, anything. There we go. Uh, we've done a little over 3,800 loans um, since uh, the company was started, actually, by my uncle uh, back in 2001. So in, in 24 years, you know, we've done a little over 3,800 loans, and we've had 12 foreclosures. So oh uh, Great we don't, yeah, we don't tell people that it, it doesn't happen. Of course, it happens. But the goal is that the investor and us, that we sleep well at night knowing we're either going to get our money and we're going to make this high rate of interest or we're going to get the property and we should be happy about that too. Uh, of right. course, we don't want to foreclose on anyone and it's obviously very rare. It's less than half a percent chance. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes things happen and that's unfortunately the way that, you know, life works. But we try to not put people in a bad situation and you can tell by those numbers, we're only really trying to work with people that will are very likely to succeed. That's great. Great. You put you make put things in very simple terms, and it's got. I know that uh, I, I want to talk to my wife about it and go, okay, let's uh, let's sit down with Nick. Let's discuss this because it just all makes sense. Yeah. So, um, I think sometimes when people think hard money, it, it makes them a little nervous, but they don't understand that really it's just a, it's a pretty straightforward process with someone who's as seasoned as you. No, it's a great uh, it's a great conversation because the hard money space is a bit loose. And what I mean mm -hmm. by that is there are certainly people that have a much higher foreclosure rate. There are mm -hmm. certainly lenders and they're actually known in our industry as loan to own lenders. And so they intentionally lend to people with bad income or bad credit and a lot of equity in their property. And they want to foreclose. They want right. a high likelihood that they will get to take over that property. Right. Uh, that, those guys kind of give us a bad reputation. Granted, that is a profitable business as well, but it's immoral and you don't sleep mm -hmm. as well at night and you're dealing with lawsuits and bankruptcies and right. it's not fun. So for us, we just want to get paid every month and live an easy, simple life. Yeah, I think it's great. I love I love your model. Absolutely. So let's get into Sue, to some real estate hell. You've got to have some interesting stories. So to talk to me about a couple of those. Absolutely. Um, I have many, um, but <laughs> I like to talk about a couple interesting ones I had in mind. Uh, in particular, something that's special about hard money is that we do deal with a lot of celebrity clientele. Mm -hmm. And the main reason for that is celebrities often have very strange income. And so my first uh, story is about a very well-known rapper who I will not say his name, um, but a very famous uh, rapper, music artist who lives in Calabasas and wanted to buy a house off Mulholland. And, you know, the way that a lot of these rappers and artists work is they'll have a year that's incredible. They drop an album, they make $10 million, they go on tour that whole year, you know, whatever the case may be. And then the following year, there's no album, the tour is over, they're not making as much money that year. And mm -hmm. so they go to the bank and they try to buy that, you know, $7 million house and the bank goes, Sorry, uh, you didn't make any money this year, even though <laughs> these are very wealthy people. And so this person in particular had a combination of that, uh, plus having not the best credit, even though it's clearly a multimillionaire. So that's an example of uh, someone that we were able to help. They were in an extreme rush scenario. There was a lot of advisors involved, lawyers and business managers and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. And luckily, at the end of the day, we got it done. Uh, the the borrower, the rapper, was switching business managers constantly throughout the loan. So every uh -huh. two, three months, he would not make his payment. And my clients, my investors would uh, freak out and not understand what's going on. And then, of course, they'd figure it out. They'd change CPAs or whatnot and get right back on track. And eventually, uh, you know, we stayed friends and, and paid off. <laughs> so. Nice, nice. Whisper to me. Hello. The name? Oh, sorry. no one's listening. Come on, just real up, real up. <laughs> yeah. uh, I was like, are we getting really close right now? Or <laughs> Yeah, I know what just happened, right? Sorry, buddy. Yes, I like you, but not not that much. Yeah. Um, all right, so what else? Tell me what else has happened. Now, you know what people won't know about you is that uh, you're a martial artist. 
And yes. so tell us a little bit about your experience and why people don't want to fuck with you. <laughs> yes, uh, I did mixed martial arts for about 12 years. Uh, I have about 43 amateur fights under my belt. Wow. Uh, black belt in three different karates, which are uh, Shotokan, Kyokushin, and Tong Sudo. And mm-hmm. then uh, a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and a brown belt in uh, Judo as well. And I wrestled. What a mix. I yeah. love it. But I'm a nice guy, I promise, unless they don't make their payment, show up at their house <laughs> and, and say hello. <laughs> yeah, got it. Okay, so tell me, uh, tell me another story. Tell me something that you've, uh, like a big challenge that you've dealt with in your industry. Yeah, the, okay, so that one was more of a fun challenge, but this one is a not as fun challenge. So mm-hmm. again, you know, most of our loans go well, but there are situations when someone doesn't pay. And so that's always a big challenge on both sides, both for for us dealing with it, our investors not getting paid every month in the meantime. And so one of these um, is the the person who was the essentially the runner of the PPE loan fraud. My uh, goodness. So if you can remember uh, mm-hmm. when, when, you know, the big, uh, I don't want to get this censored or anything, but, you know, the big sickness, <laughs> the big sickness in 2019. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people were getting the government loans and a lot of people were taking advantage of that program. Right. And so one person in particular did a multi, multi dollar fraud, fraudulent, uh, you know, receivership of a lot of this money. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when they were qualifying for a loan with us, they couldn't get a bank loan because they had just came into money all of a sudden. Banks like mm-hmm. to see seasoning and multiple years of income. So sure. we gave this person a loan and they seemed to be very wealthy. They had millions of dollars in their bank account. And they were putting 40% down on the purchase of a property, which for us is a, an high amount. And we love to see that. So we do the loan. And then, of course, this person gets caught with a PPE loan fraud. And because he is the face of this situation, they decide to make an example of him. Lovely. And he understands that he's about to go to jail for a very long time. And he's going to be all over the news. And so he flees to Morocco. And... Ultimately, the U.S. government has to seize the property. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, once that happens, we're no longer getting our monthly payment and we have to file for foreclosure. But turns out it's not so easy to foreclose on the U.S. government and take their property. Um, (laughs) So that was a very extenuating circumstance. Um, What ended up happening was the feds liquidated the property and they found someone who wanted to buy it off of them. And that client got a loan from us to then buy the property again. So we did two loans uh, purchasing that same property, which of course saved all of our investors their money. They were happy and the government was happy and you know it all worked out, so. I've never heard of that, foreclosing on a US government. So the US government takes the property, but in essence you own it because you're foreclosing, but they're for, now you're not foreclosing on your the client, you're foreclosing the government right the government basically <laughs> took over the property and that's now the bar we're getting foreclosed on and you know the u.s government isn't known <laughs> to make monthly mortgage payments for their <laughs> citizens or for their criminals shall i say wow well wow. okay i didn't see that one coming i'm like I'm where are you going with this so far yeah. do you have another one you want to share with us i i can frankly i can keep going and going and going <laughs> um i have another one i have one that i just did actually very recently um, this is a retired supermodel. I'm going to try to not give too many specifics here just because it's so recent. But this person basically had um, retired quite a few years ago. Yeah. And because of that, it's, of course, again, difficult for them to prove income. Um, but they are, let's just say, multimillionaires. And mm-hmm. everyone knows this about them. And they know this. Perfect credit. Uh, lots of assets. Owns lots of real estate. And they want to basically come back into the limelight and mm-hmm. launch a business. And so uh-huh. they're going to do this big, hey, I'm back. Why do I still look so mm-hmm. good? Because check out, you know, my skin product or uh-huh. whatever oh, it might smart. be. I like it. They go to the bank to try to get a loan for a couple million bucks to launch this product. And the bank says, sorry, you've been retired for X amount of years and uh, we can't rely on you to pay us back. We can't lend to you. Again, very uh, unfortunate for them. They have a business manager that tries getting it done through other methods, and eventually they have to come to us. Mm -hmm. Um, They own a property in Brentwood worth well over $10 million that's free and clear. 
Do they need yeah. an agent any, by any chance? <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're selling it. <laughs> you're, you're the number one go-to, of course, if they need a sale. If anyone, if uh, selling, you know, there's going to be some people listening to this that are going to say, I don't think so. <laughs> one of them is going to be this tall. <laughs> So, you know, ultimately for my investors, of course, if you're loaning someone $2 million and you get a $10 million asset as collateral, then you're going to sleep well at night. Um, it's kind of a no brainer. So just another example of having to jump through hoops to prove that, yes, someone retired can actually afford to make their mortgage payment. So I love these stories. I think they're so interesting because sometimes um, when we have a guest, we hear, you know, if I have one more you know, there was a possum in the house story, you know, it's like, okay, all right, we get it. There's a possum in the house and there was a hoarder, but these ones are so much so different. I really like that. And so um, tell me about this real quick, if you could. The uh, I know that not, you're not just a hard money guy. You're a businessman. You're an athlete. Uh, I know you're also a giver. So talk to us about something. Maybe is there any type of charity or or organization that you want to shed light on? Because we like to be able to always include that whenever we can in our podcast. Sure. So, uh, and thank you for uh, the opportunity to shout that out. So I'm a member yeah. of um, two different organizations. One is called the Guardians and one is called the Executives. But the great thing about them is they both contribute to the same place, which is the LA Jewish home. The LA Jewish home is very important in our community. I'm Jewish. And uh, especially right now with a lot of controversy going on in America, I think it's an important time to kind of um, be charitable and to step up for the community and, and kind mm -hmm. of show what we can do. And so, yeah, I think right now those are my two main focuses. Of course, I've been involved in, in others, but those are the ones I'd like to highlight right now. So the L.A. Jewish Home. I think that's great. You know who I want to be talking to coming up soon? Is, uh, is Anthony Bihar. Yes, the president yes. of the Guardians. Yes. So whenever you talk about Guardians, that I mean, I know that's heavy on his heart, too. It's, I just love the fact that that um, I'm swimming in waters with people who are just such great professionals, great people, always giving back. It's just that's one of the reasons that I enjoy. It makes, my, it, makes it easier for me to build my business because I'm doing it while I like it with people I like. And otherwise, I think I'd be I'd be just missed business. So. Yeah, no, it's uh, working with people you like. It's it's sometimes it's not as much about money as it is about sleeping well at night and enjoying your yep. time. And so, you know, making an extra million bucks and having that extra car is not going to change your life. But enjoying your time with your friends and your clients is that's right. All. Well, I look back and there's probably there's a, a nice little deals every year where I look at and I go, oh, wow, that was cool. Um, and wow, I think we really made a difference there. Um, one of the deals that I called you about in particular was, you know, obviously I'm not going to mention any names either, but you know, they have their, it's, the situation is pretty dire. And if this older person sells the house, then there's going to be capital gains. And so they're, 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 they're there's hundreds of thousands of dollars that can go. So I'm coming to the listing appointment. They want to sell right away because they need the money. And I say, okay, okay. I, I totally get us. Let's talk about your, your trust and, that. and they go, huh? So do you have a trust? And they go, well, not really. Are you talking with a CPA right now? No. But, okay. Where is your dad going to go? Well, he's going to go where he's, he needs to do that. Say, Who are you talking to? We don't know. So I just pulled out, pulled out my, okay, you're going to meet so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. So and this was months ago. So instead of just getting this listing and, uh, and selling it and getting my commission, I thought, wouldn't it be awesome if while doing this, while taking care of my business, I could help these people? So that we did that and uh, even brought over a uh, lender, not a lender, but a someone, a leasing specialist mm -hmm. that, hey, just so you know, um, maybe you want to lease this for a couple of years first. I don't know what your situation is. But so I think we'll, just doing the right thing by people to me just really feeds the heart and feeds the spirit. And having people like you that, that I can go to to help facilitate this stuff really makes a big difference. Yeah, that is an excellent example also of who you are, Scott, because I think a lot of advisors get the opportunity to work with clients, but they don't take the extra step of basically asking, how else can I help you besides what mm -hmm. is going to make me money? And so you obviously take the opportunity and realize that you can become the nucleus of this person's advisor life and kind of mm -hmm. make their life easier in other ways, which 
in turn makes it easier for you as well. So yeah, I mean, you know, that's more, if everyone was like you, obviously the world would be a much better place. Well, it's very kind of you. I, I think it's a win for everybody. And so to me, when I do that, that's, you know, if I go home, it's not as much about telling my wife about a deal that closed, but oh gosh, this is what just happened. And, right. th and we were able to do this with so-and-so. Anyway, there's many stories like that. And I just feel really fortunate to be in those circles. Right. And yeah, so, absolutely. 